Assalamu alaikum everyone welcome back to PHP tutorials today is our lecture number 22 and in today's lecture I'm going to teach you how can you insert data inside the database of MySQL within a table okay in the previous lecture we have seen how to connect your, your PHP page with your uh, MySQL database so let's start and have a look what we have today alright so uh, guys this is the previous page inside uh, the previous lecture we have created in the previous lecture we have created this page and we have checked the status whether we have connected to our database or not so uh, in today's lecture what I want I, what I'm trying to do uh, I am removing this all and just save this page and I will use this page inside another PHP page so that I can be able to insert my data so let's create another PHP page by clicking on the file and then click new and then select your PHP and then select HTML5 and then select create. Now here uh, you wanted to uh, create a form and on that form you you create uh, let's say for example you can create any form for for example you can insert customers data you can insert an employee record or you can insert whatever you wanted to okay. So uh, let's create uh, something and before creating something let's go first on the chrome and uh, go to the php my admin and verify what database and what table we have created in the previous lecture then we'll uh, create the user interface with respect to that so that's my php my admin guys how i have reached at this point if you do not know then let me write here again you can simply write here localhost call in your port number if you have and then simply press enter and after this you have to go to php my admin so that's the dashboard of uh, Zemp, and then you have to click on PHP My Admin. When you reach PHP My Admin, uh, you see your database listed on the left hand side, and then you can click on your database so that you can be able to work. So this is my example DB database, and here you can see I have created in the previous lecture this customers table, and inside this customers table I have some columns, and those columns are these. So I have these columns and I have to design a user interface so that I can be able to insert the records as per this table. So let's go there and then insert records and create a user interface. So uh, because uh, this is a data insertion tutorial, so I'm not going to demonstrate how I'm creating user interface. So I'll be right back after creating this user interface so that our time can be saved. So let's go. Okay guys welcome back now uh, I was uh, thinking about that I must mention how I am going to design this page so uh, let's continue and design this page so what I have done already here I have downloaded the CSS files uh, the bootstrap CSS files basically and I have added here so where are my files actually uh, located so I have created the scripts folder inside my main directory and I have created the styles folder inside my main directory and inside the scripts folder I have added my jquery for uh, for bootstrap and inside my styles folder i have added the css file okay and then i have added both the things here on my uh, within my head tag so that's basically the linking of the bootstrap files here now then what i have done i have created a class or i have uh, used a class of bootstrap that is known as container and it will make my body look like a container a responsive container okay it's a built-in class of bootstrap now uh, let us create the form tag and inside this form tag you have to specify the action that where you want it to go so I don't want to go anywhere and I am wanted to send the data with respect to which method so I am writing here post method. We have seen uh, in the previous um, lectures about the form tag now I am continuing if you wish to send your data somewhere uh, from this page to another page then you have to specify that page name here okay. For, for for this particular example, let me write here insert.php. For example, I am sending the data to this page with this, this, this post method. Okay, There are multiple ways you can send data to the uh, different page or to next page or to another page that is get, post, put and delete. So uh, these are the two methods that we can normally use here. Okay, So you can use post or you can use get. So now. Uh, let's write here post so F P O S T. keep this post in capital uh, avoid this pop-up it will be uh, removed after some time no problem now let's design the page so let us first create a div and inside this div I'm mentioning a column here because bootstrap requires columns on the page so uh, specify class and then equals to and then uh, you can specify column with size 4 okay specify column with size 4 
this is the problem with Dreamweaver, so don't worry about this. Now, that's my first column, and then copy this and paste it, and you need to paste it again. So I have divided my screen into four divs, and inside every div, I I will work. I, I will uh, design my page. So inside this div, I'm adding a label, label, label close, and then here you can specify name of the customer name and then what else you need you need to specify the input type equals to text specify text here actually my dream viewer is not working well I don't know why okay name then double quotes and then right here name text and then close it and then give here a class equals to form container or form control form dash control okay that's it now save it and let's see what is the result of this particular page on browser so you can see the data is there and the bootstrap is also applying and if you uh, minimize the page or reduce the size of the page you can see the page is automatically resizing but we are not going to design this page completely right now just add these controls and then carry on so copy and then paste below this and specify here what is the next field that you have to add let us go to the php my admin and let us open the customers and you can notice here the columns okay so name then username password and email and phone number so here you specify username text and then specify the label as username and then um, create likewise other controls copy and paste here you can specify password okay and then here it should be the password text and then save it after that paste again and here you need to specify the phone number and input type equal to text and it should be phone text okay and the phone control is there and you can specify the pattern of the phone number if you wish to let's say for pakistan phone number you can specify the pattern with the help of this pattern keyword and whatever the country code you have whatever the pattern of the phone number you have you can specify directly here inside the pattern let's say in pakistan we need three zero then three and then we need numbers from 0 to 4 for third digit and then that should be only 1 and then you need uh, any number from 0 to 9 that's that will be the fourth digit of the code and it, it, it is only 1 and then we need dash so this is the pattern so that user cannot be enter invalid phone number so this is how you can specify now 0 to 9 will be the next seven digits any number can come so this is the pattern how you can specify now uh, the next thing that we have to add is after phone number that is email so let us copy and paste again paste it and now rename it to email and then you can specify here email text and you can change the type of the text box with the email okay so that's it save it and now let's go to the browser and refresh this page and see what will be the result so look guys my page is now successfully created but this should be the password field so let us go to the text uh, property and here you can specify input type equal to password that's it and now if you go on the page and refresh you can see it will be now it, it is now password now um, because column 4 is not good so you can specify call 12 and then let's see what is the result so that the controls will become much larger now it's it is better and when you minimize it look the controls are automatically resizing with respect to the screen size okay so this is the benefit of bootstrap now let's add a button so that when you click that button you can be able to uh, add inside the database so let's add a button after this so right here input type equals to close it input type equal to let me go upward now it's fine so input type equals to button sorry submit 
specify submit here because you wanted to submit the data and then value and then specify here save or register whatever you can write it's your choice and then you can specify the name of this button as well so save btn after this after this btn close this tab and specify the form control here by class equals to btn and then the next thing that you have to specify here is btn info or btn light or btn dark whatever you can specify so btn light let's see what will be the result of this so execute so look the button is there but it is not as i want so you can specify the dark property here btn dark and then save and then come here and then refresh so you can see the button is there but it is sticked on the uh, email text box so what you can do you can specify the style property here directly that's the inline css and you can do with the help of bootstrap as well no problem so style equals to margin dash top colon 5 px that's it so save it and now come here and then refresh so you can see there is a gap in between the controls so this is how you can do the task now what's the next step the next step is to insert the record when you click the save button look it is saying that you your insert.php page is nowhere so let's go and create the insert.php page so uh, new and then php and then html5 and then create here you are only inserting the record so i'm not going to describe any html simply open the php markers and then you have to include your connection first you know we have created the connection page already so we can uh, it is a good practice to add one time the connection page uh, at the top of this every php page if you create connection on every page then it will be the repetitive code every time close the markers now and then specify the file name file open and then you can see you have the db connectivity page and it has a it has a variable in within it that is connect so what do you do first save this page with the name insert.php on the same location and then here you can specify include and then the file name that is db connectivity as written on the top of the dreamweaver db connectivity.php so what will happen after writing this line you can be able to use that file the content of that file that you have created there okay now you can specify if dollar connect what does this mean this means if my database connection is successful so i'm doing that stuff here okay so if my database connection is successful then come inside and then the next step is to write the query for insert so dollar query is equals to how can you specify the insert query insert into and then the name of the table is customer if you if i'm not wrong you can see here the name of the table is customers okay so customers and then you have to specify the columns and then specify the values now before doing before completing this query we have to first get the data from the page that uh, from where we are coming so what you can do we can specify another if if dollar underscore post and then double quotes and then specify here that particular button that you have created here so the name of my button is save button so copy and come here and paste that button inside is set so here one more function that i am writing here that is is set and specify that button inside this so what will happen when someone directly come tries to come on this page he or she will be checked and validated whether he is coming from a proper channel or not whether the button is submitted pressed or not it will check the is set function will check whether the function or the variable has the value or not so if the button is pressed then this if will work otherwise this if will not work so this is the security or validation what you can say it is not a good practice to directly enter query inside your php my um, php page always you have to specify stored procedures but because this is the very first lecture 
for saving your record so that's why i'm doing this like this now let us retrieve the records from that page customer sign up so dollar name equals to and then dollar underscore post this is the way you can retrieve data from that page once more let me show you this page look guys here you have specified the form with the post and you are sending your data to insert your insert dot php so when the button was button is pressed the data from these controls will be passed to this page insert dot php okay and here the first text box name is name text so you have received your data here like this and then come here and paste and paste and paste so this is how you can retrieve the data from every particular control from that page so rename it with other controls like okay guys so i have added every i have get or i have retrieved from that page every single control and i have created these variables and i have stored the data from those um, dollar underscore post inside these variables now the next step is to get the column name so i have c underscore name then i have c underscore username and then so on so let's go here and write inside this so c underscore name will be my first column and then the next column will be c underscore username specify here c underscore username don't worry about the um, what can say what i can say order and then after username c underscore pass so c underscore pass and then specify the next column that is c underscore email c underscore phone so c underscore email and then c underscore phone what else we need i think i have done with all values now uh, respectively as you have mentioned the column names respectively you have to pass the variable names so first column is my name column so pass here the name variable but because this is sql query you have to specify text within single quotes this is the thing that you have to remember now the next thing is the username so inside single quotes it's also a string so dollar username or u name specify here u name and then sorry for that okay so specify here u name as a variable name and then the next column is the password so password should also be here so dollar password and then specify sorry for that my my dream viewer is not working well so a lot of apologies specify your password now all right guys so i have written all the query together so with respect to name i have name with respect to username i have username and then password password email email and phone and phone so you have to verify it again and again do not please do not make spelling mistakes okay and now after doing this what you have to do you have to specify an if condition again because in php you have you see every every function that is that is used to specify the database operation it is a boolean function so how can you execute this query it's very simple you have to write here mysqli underscore execute and then open the brackets and then you can specify the connection and then the property so dollar connect is your connection and then specify your query that is query that's it and then close the bracket so what will happen if the query is executed successfully it will come inside this if otherwise it will go on the else condition so you can write here echo and then you can specify an alert message within the script or you can directly display it on echo script and then specify that's the javascript and now alert customer account created successfully or you can specify any message of your choice else you have to specify unable to save customer account or unable to create customer account so copy this one and then come inside and paste and change the message unable to add customer simple save it 
So guys, one more thing that I must mention here, the function that I have opted here, it is wrong. You have to specify my SQLI underscore query uh, in order to execute this query. Why we, why we use my SQLI underscore query? Because this function is used to execute the query, not that one that I have written before. So that's the correct way. Now it's time to check the, this particular program. All right, guys, so I have opened my page and here let me write a name, let's say Tahir. And then the username should also be Tahir in small caps. 12345 will be the password. And then 0313-123-1231. And then email should be Tahir at the rate yahoo.com. And then when you press the save button, it should display the message. And yes, it is displaying me the message that customer account created successfully. And now you can go navigate back to that page also. But this is the uh, introductory uh, way to demonstrate the insertion inside PHP and MySQL. So let us go to the MySQL and see whether we have the record or not. I have already added one record, but now let us uh, execute this query once again. SQL and then specify this query and remove this where clause and then specify click the go button. So you can see now I have two records with the customer ID adding automatically. So I hope it is clear to everyone. This is a very simple manner how we can add data with the help of PHP inside MySQL database. So uh, I hope you have understood everything. If you do not understand anything, please do write me. Thank you so much. Take care. Allah Hafiz.